history here at the St. Louis Zoo. I'm Diane Torin Kagi, reporter at the St. Louis Post Dispatch, and this is a 1917 Elephant House, the very first building at the St. Louis Zoo. This used to be home to Miss Jim, but now it's home to Zootennial, an exhibit that celebrates 100 years of St. Louis Zoo history. Let's go inside and check it out. The St. Louis Zoo has been home to some animals that St. Louis Zoo's have really embraced. Of course, there's Raja and Siegfried the Walrus, but Phil just looms larger than life in our memories. Tell me about this guy. My dad's name was Phil, and he told me that Phil the gorilla was named after him. <laughs> Being a little kid, obviously, I believed him. I'll mm -hmm. never forgive him for that. <laughs> but yeah, we have these icon animals that people have such a profound association with, and that's sometimes their connection to wildlife. Rimba! Rimba! Hey, big bear! A hundred years ago, exhibits were much simpler than they are today. Mm -hmm. They were basically concrete, with some metal bars, those kinds of things. But what you see today is a much more natural environment for the animals. That alone is very stimulating and, and more exciting for the animals. Today they're getting one of their favorite foods, which is baby cereal mixed with Kool-Aid. Ooh, that sounds delicious. They love it. They really do enjoy it. And it looks like Miskin right there has a, a PVC tube, which has a banana in one end, and I think it has some of the Kool-Aid mixture in the other end they get a whole host of different kinds of enrichment uh, which stimulates the animals and it encourages them to use their natural foraging behaviors. Those climbing behaviors, the manipulation, uh, those kinds of things that they would do in the wild. You have researchers in Madagascar, mm -hmm. in Armenia, all over the world. Yeah. What is the zoo doing across the globe? We'll find um, an iconic species or a flagship species, and we'll try and save that species in the habitat where it's found. And if you can save the habitat for that species, you're going to save it for all the other plants and animals that live in, in that range. And so you're really doing conservation for all the plants and animals, but you're focused on one. People think of zoos as arcs. I don't. Uh, the, the, it, we just, we're, we'll never be big enough to handle all the, all the critically endangered species. We're, we're more like a lifeboat for a precious few species. For dessert? Yeah, you want some dessert? For one, they're just cute. They walk cute, they sing cute. It's just this fun little animal that almost isn't... <laughs> that's trouble. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, that a lot of people are just kind of curious about anyway. A lot of people don't even realize they're birds uh -huh. because they are so unlike other birds. <laughs> This is Trouble. Trouble's my buddy. She earned that name because okay. she actually likes to jump out and run around. She she knows and Trouble, can you vocal? No. Ah! <laughs> There's a couple kings that are notorious splashers and they will literally lure you in to look closer and then take their big bumper and flap it over the glass. So I should take it personally if yeah, it's, it's not an accident. It's fun. Okay. Yeah. I think they enjoy it. It's it's just as entertaining for them. <laughs> that was fun. Thanks for coming with us to the St. Louis Zoo, a favorite attraction for St. Louisans for a hundred years and surely for generations more.